Um, good morning, everyone, and so glad to see so many of you here. Um, as uh, Dr. Dennison said, I'm a lawyer by profession. Um, how did I get involved as a lawyer with the Orang Asli? Well, all this came about because my cell group decided to go to one of the Orang Asli villages and just have a look-see. You know, it's very dangerous when, uh, well, I won't say dangerous. Uh, when people say, come and have a look-see. Well, don't think twice because when, I, when our cell group jumped in, we were truly blessed. So that look-see become a stay-see meaning that we, our cell group then regularly went into this village in Johor, in Kahang, Johor, near Kluang, and it has been a regular monthly visit to this village, staying to the many villages there, sorry, not just one village, staying overnight on Saturday, ministering to the Orang Aslis there, gospel, sharing the gospel, discipling, and community development. And how did that fit in as, uh, in my role as a lawyer? You know, when we go down to the, the ground, to the villages, we don't only share the gospel with them. We try and see what their practical needs are, and we try and help them. And a lot of times, they have legal needs. Now, um, as a lawyer, when I went into one of the villages uh, which needed help, the villagers had an issue of encroachment into their land from their neighbour. And this was a village in Pahang. I was called in and a team of us, four of us, drove down. It was a very lonely road, three and a half hours from KL, to this village in Pahang, Bukit Ridan, Mwatzam Shah. And when we went in, we saw that the neighbour had encroached into the Orang Asli village. And they said, and the whole village came together because it was a community thing. So the whole village was called. I shared and gave advice on how to stop this uh, encroachment. They were very thankful. And then after that, they adopted me as their lawyer. <laughs> and people who had family problems, you know, uh, came and asked about help in the family problems. And there was a couple, their daughter, was uh, raped by a Chinese man. And they didn't know where she was. They knew she was somewhere in Johor. And so they said, and, and I said, hey, I, my team goes down to Johor to help. Let me try and make inquiries. And you all know how big, what a large state Johor is, right? So we, I went to my village and I made inquiries. Do you know of this lady? She is from Pahang, an Orang Asli lady. And she now lives with a Chinese man who is her, now her husband, and they have a child. And my, the Orang Aslis there made inquiries, and they say, yes, yes, we know of this person. And she's actually living in the village where our team ministers to. See, only God, you know, from Pahang, he brought me all the way to Joho, where I was already serving. And we found this lady, and we went to help her, uh, and, and, and just minister to her. And now she's become one of the most, our most regular uh, cell group members in Kahang in Johor. And that was just because I was helping an encroachment issue in Pahang, and God linked me from Pahang to Johor, and Johor back to Pahang. And that's one of the, the ways that we've been helping uh, we are also helping the land rights cases up in Guamusang, in uh, Kelantan, where you see there's a lot of logging that's going on in the Orang Asli villages. Um, one of the villages, many villages there, are the, one, are the villages that was in the news recently, where the children got lost, in the school got lost in the forest, and these children come from the villages that we are helping. So we have immediate contact with the parents, the relatives, the first thing they do, they always call the lawyer, call the bar council, you know, and, and as a Christian, I mean, it's so good to be able to connect with these people, to bring God into their lives, to share the gospel, to disciple them, and not just to, 
to help them in their land rights, but to help the whole person bringing the gospel of Jesus and transforming their lives and their communities. One story that um, I can share is um, when we go in, we go in with our families, we go in with our children. Now, I, I see all of you, um, some married, some maybe not yet married. But, you know, and a lot of the complaints of parents is, oh, yeah, I don't want my children always facing the TV or the iPad or the iPhone. You know, I bring my daughter into the, the, the Orang Asli villages and she has the time of her life swimming in the river, bathing in the river, playing, you know, on the ground, not just at home, you know, in the aircon room, and, and just enjoying the environment. And one day we, were, we went into this village in Kahang. We finished quite late, 10 o'clock at night, after our cell group. We were all coming out in the car. And that day, the Orang Aslis had told us, uh, watch out for the elephants. Because there were a herd of elephants going through the, the, the jungle and just uh, pushing everything that was in their way. And so when my daughter was quite excited, she said, oh, I hope we can see the elephants, you know. And we were trying to avoid the elephants. <laughs> so as we were going out, true, there's only one road going in and coming in and going out. And while we were going out, suddenly a log fell across the road and our car had to stop. And the log fell across the whole road. So the four of us got out. My daughter, myself, uh, and the pastors. And we stood there and looked at the lock. And my pastor, he thought he was very strong, you know, he tried to lift the lock. But, but of course he couldn't. And then we were just standing there figuring, and before, before even we uttered a prayer, help came from the opposite direction. We were going out, this four-wheel drive was coming in. And so we, we shouted to them, hey, did you bring an axe? you know, in the car. And what a silly question it was when I think back. Why would people be having access in their cars, right? Then they said, no, don't worry. We don't have an axe, but we will call for help. So who are you going to call for help? 10 o'clock on a road, lonely road. The road only goes into the Orang Asli village and goes out. But they called for help, and five minutes later, three four-wheel drives came alongside, and they had not only access, they had the power saws, you know. And they saw the whole lock into pieces. Ten people came and helped us and removed the whole lock and we were able to move out. You know, it's wonderful how God just provides, even before we prayed. And there's so many stories, so many stories of uh, Bomos turning to Christ. And not just herself turning to Christ, bringing her family members to Christ. So that was just last month. And then we have stories of uh, people released from de demon possession. It's the book of Acts coming alive. So if you want adventure, if you want to experience God really working miraculously, you come and join us. You don't have to be a lawyer, you know. <laughs> In fact, better not to be a lawyer because then they ask you, can you help me with my IC? Can you help me to, uh, in the hospital? Can you help me to fill up the, the form to apply for IC? You know? um, can you help me how to uh, convert out? You know, things like that. So, but there are so many practical ways to help. Help with the children's ministry. Help with the adults. Help them in uh, what to do with their land teach them new methods of planting. So the, 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 these practical ways are what each of you can do. And the most important, just being there. You may just be there not doing anything, but your presence shows that you care. That you care enough to travel all the way from KL to wherever their village is, to sacrifice a day. And that's what counts. So to, just to end, I'm just going to share a short uh, movie clip of what the Jubilee Ministry does for the Orang Aslis in Peninsular Malaysia. We have four villages that we are helping, one in Bentong, one in Ulu Langat, 
one in uh, Kerry Island, Pulau Kerry, and one in Kahang Johor. So this short clip will show the work that we are doing in all these four villages. Thank you very much.